Today's show is all about arthritis and what you can do to help prevent it or find relief if you already suffer from it. First, we want to focus on the most common condition, which is osteoarthritis. And sorry to be the bearer of bad news, ladies, but according to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, we women are most likely to suffer from it. Osteoarthritis is a disease that affects joints, which Cheryl Blanchard studies carefully as the chief scientific officer at Zimmer, a company known as a worldwide leader in joint replacement solutions for knee and hip pain. You end up with exposed bone, and that bone, when you walk or you move, tends to rub on the opposing bony surface, and that's what generally causes pain, inflammation, achiness, and swelling of the joints. There are many causes of osteoarthritis, from your age, weight, body type, Type, joint alignment, activity level to prior trauma, but your gender may be the first sign that you are more at risk. But one of the big things for women is just the alignment of their body and their body type. Women tend to live longer than men, and as a result, they simply have more osteoarthritis than men do. Symptoms often develop slowly and get worse over time. You may feel pain in the joint during or after activity or when you've been inactive. Your joints may feel stiff or tender or you may experience a loss of flexibility or swelling. Arthritis has no cure, but it can be treated. Certainly I'm not a medical doctor, but the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons reports that early detection and early intervention of osteoarthritis can lead to the slowing down of the progression of that disease. Talk to your doctor about treatments. In the early stages, non-surgical options such as pain medications, physical therapy, weight loss, and lifestyle changes may help. If the pain persists or gets worse, surgery is an option. And it's a decision that needs to be made in conjunction with your physician and your family. Surgery is usually reserved for severe osteoarthritis. One of the most commonly replaced joints is the knee, and the number of women having knee replacement surgery is growing. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons reports that out of the half a million total knee replacements performed each year in the U.S., about two-thirds of those surgeries are on females. A 2007 study in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery showed that women with osteoarthritis tend to delay treatment much longer than men do. In fact, three times as many women forego total knee replacement surgery altogether. Women tend to be the primary caregivers of the home. They also tend to be the people in the household that make most of the medical decisions. Most of the women are thinking, gee, if I go have this surgery, I'm not gonna be able to take care of people. There's rehab, there's recovery. I don't have time for that. So they tend to neglect their own medical care in this regard. When a woman finally decides it's time to seek surgery and have a total knee replacement, she really should explore all the options. During a total knee replacement procedure, the part of your bone and cartilage that's replaced in this example here are the parts that are covered by the metal and plastic components. So these parts here are cut away by the surgeon. That represents where the diseased tissue would be in your knee. Historically, the surgeons that perform a lot of to total knee replacement surgeries on both men and women, we're starting to see that when they perform total knee replacements on their female patients, they were having to make more bone cuts and do things a little bit differently in the operating room in order to ensure a good fit of that implant on those female patients. A female knee is different from a male knee. There are three primary differences between a female and male type knee. The primary differences included the front of the knee in men is thicker and thinner in women. The angle that the patella tracks on the femur is different in men and women and the shape of a woman's knee is slightly thinner in some areas and has a different shape in that regard. So we designed an implant taking into account the male type and female type anatomical differences. So instead of making the patient fit the implant, we made the implant fit the patient. In fact, Zimmer's Gender Solutions Knee Implant is the first and only knee replacement shape to fit a woman's anatomy. And research indicates that more than 90% of those who get a total knee replacement experience a dramatic reduction of knee pain and a significant improvement in their ability to perform their daily activities. But if the thought of knee replacement surgery still strikes fear in your heart, then you'll want to stay tuned. This woman's inspiring story just may change your mind. It's given me five years back in my life. I feel five years younger now than I did before the surgery.
Welcome back to this special My Health edition of the Balancing Act, dedicated to helping you find some relief from arthritis. Earlier in the show, we talked about the relief those in severe pain often find from knee replacement surgery. But if you're going for surgery, you not only want to hear from your doctor, but probably from someone who's been through the surgery. So next, you'll hear from a woman who's had not one, but both knees replaced. And she says she now has her very active lifestyle back. The arthritis was diagnosed about 14, 15 years ago in my left knee. Um, I could tell that it was getting worse and worse. So much so that Debbie Shroud began to lose the exercise she loved, long walks, hiking national parks with her husband, and especially running. When the pain started in my right knee about eight years ago, it increased rapidly. I knew what it was right away, and uh, it just caught up with the other knee very quickly. Both knees were hurting a lot while I was running, so I said, okay, fine, I guess I just have to stop running, which is very depressing. Uh, stairs were very difficult, very slow, uh, cumbersome. Debbie's daily activities often came with terrible pain, which she first treated with over-the-counter pain medications. Then she was prescribed anti-inflammatory drugs, cortisone injections, and finally, physical therapy. Deciding to have surgery is not easy, but it, and when you get to the point where you're in so much pain, <laughs> you just want to have it done. Finally, in her early 50s, Debbie's doctor said there was no cartilage left between her bones and it was time to replace both knees. Then he told her about the Zimmer gender knee. What he said was, the doctor said to me that the gender knee is something that is uh, used for women. It's developed with the woman's body in mind. Uh, it's contoured and shaped more like the woman's knee. And I thought that sounded <laughs> like what I wanted, <laughs> obviously. Soon after surgery, Debbie started rehab. You know, the first few steps were <laughs> scary got me out of bed the first day and uh, made me take a few steps and I actually took more than a few steps. I actually did pretty well with a walker. It was scary, but it was, uh, it was doable. Three months after the surgery, I was able to ride again without any pain at all. Absolutely, totally pain-free, very comfortable. And then 10 months afterwards, I was in my first horse show. Um, I came in third. <laughs> Getting up and down off the floor with my granddaughter to play with her was a challenge before, and now it's, uh, it's easy. Now I go zipping up and down the stairs, no problem. It's given me five years back of my life. I feel five years younger now. Now, compared to before, just doing anything on a daily basis is so much easier and Anything you can think of, walking, shopping, getting in and out of a car, just standing for any length of time was painful. Now it's totally pain-free. Giving up hiking the national parks in the summer was very difficult. Um, and now it's, uh, it's a joy again. <laughs> That's a great story. Now, if you would like to find out more information about the Zimmer gender knee, just go to genderknee.com.